Welcome friends to the 2023 Genesis G90 review. We have a lot to cover here, so let's get started. We'll talk about what this is, the exterior, and we'll get into the drive and finally the interior space. So what is it? Well, it is a flagship sedan from the company known as Genesis. But I'm not seeing any more scoffers, trolls, mockers, because there's really nothing here to laugh at anymore those times are over with and it's been over with for a very long time i've had an extensive amount of experience with this brand i even leased a 2018 genesis g80 in the past and honestly that car the old g80 from 2018 that taught me a lot of discernment on what a proper luxury sedan should feel like till this day that g80 is one of my most favorite driving luxury cars so the model that you see here this is a hundred thousand dollars this is the fully loaded 48 volt e supercharge model well and then we do have a base model g90 which is around 90 grand and that does not come with the 48 volt mild hybrid e supercharger system and it also lacks a couple of features and i'll get into that as we progress into this review but this is really the model that you want with all the luxury features it's certainly more expensive than the previous g90 and that's absolutely fine because this is a car of really no compromise this is absolutely in the leagues of the s classes the 7 series the a8s the ls's from lexus this car is about 207 inches long and just to give you some context that's about a whole foot longer than a bmw 5 series there is an extended wheelbase version that's even longer than this However, that's not sold in the United States. That's only sold in like Korea, I believe. And this car really does have a grand look and demeanor to it. People are absolutely looking at it. They're pointing at it. They're just infatuated with the way this car is designed, honestly. We have here a clamshell hood, which really reduces the amount of unnecessary lines in the car. Super sleek headlights and taillights. In fact, we have a dual taillight bar in the back. It's just a wild look that this car has during the day and during the night and these wheels are just nuts we have your 21 inch wheels with this fully loaded model and it's this crazy multi-spoke two-tone design and even the base model of the g90 comes with these 20 inch wheels and even those wheels look crazy you can't even get aftermarket wheels that look this amazing. And that's because they haven't sacrificed the elegance of this car. As crazy as those wheels look, there's something still classy about this car. But please leave your thoughts in the comment section on the looks of this car. I would be very interested in reading them. Okay, with that established, let's go ahead and let's transition over into this drive. <music> Driving this car and sitting in the back, it's both equally as important. And fortunately, Genesis has taken the time and the resources to dedicate time to both, both in the driving and to the people sitting in the back. From the driver's seat, you are going to be blown away by this chamber of isolation, tranquility, and serenity. This is no joke, one of the quietest and most comfortable cars I have ever been in. Now, what does that really mean exactly? Quietness, that can't really be disputed. That's very impressive to make a car this quiet. I'll get into some of the technology that went into that. However, from a ride quality standpoint, there's actually a lot of cars in this world that are comfortable. Okay, you can buy compact cars, like $20,000 cars that are comfortable. Okay, a Hyundai Elantra with a torsion beam rear suspension is comfortable a mazda 3 is comfortable but it's the way that these flagship cars in particular go about it that really makes the experience complete and what do i mean by that well this brand new g90 makes use of a multi-chamber air suspension and that's made all the difference because i have tested the 2018 g90 and i was don't get me wrong i was very impressed with that car it had a tank like quality to it and it did not use air suspension yet that was also 
a majestic ride quality. But the thing that happens when you have a proper, well-tuned air suspension setup is you now get that magic carpet-like quality. That sensation that you are just floating or hovering around on the road. And not every air suspension car feels like this because you can absolutely screw up air suspension and it can feel jittery and unrefined. This is honestly as good as the Mercedes S-Class. The W222 S-Class is a vehicle I hold at a high regard as being one of the top luxury cars I've ever tested. This rivals and in some cases even exceeds the old S-Class. I have not tried the new W223 S-Class that just came out so I can't really comment on that and I've only tried the 2020 LS500, the 2027 series and like a 20. 16 or 17 Audi A8. So not the latest iterations of either of these cars, but I can still shed some light and some thoughts on those cars as well. But this G90, totally different approach from the previous generation one. That was a world-class product, but this does it in a totally different way. This car is large enough to have its own solar system revolve around it, yet you can just whip it with a pinky. That's the magic, and that's the difference between this riding amazing and something like a compact car being comfortable right it's the character it's the demeanor it's the quality mind you this is also a car that weighs almost 5200 pounds i think the non e supercharged version is around 48 or 4900 pounds even still despite this gargantuan size and weight it feels light it feels airy it feels light on its toes and there's no compromise with this ride quality. It rides great over small bumps, large bumps. It swallows everything up flawlessly. Now let's talk about the quietness because I already mentioned that this is literally one of the quietest cars I've ever been in. And that's true, that is not an exaggeration. But there's a lot of technology that went into this car being this quiet. This has laminated acoustic glass all throughout the vehicle. I mean, the double pane glass up in the front and the rear, it's all proper. There's no shortcuts being taken here. But we also have an active noise canceling system embedded into the speakers of this car. To reduce some of those unwanted harsh road noises, they are actually pumping in a certain frequency to negate the unwanted noises that this car produces, like the road noise or tire noise and other things. I mean, I should probably talk about the speed of this car because this is the 405 horsepower, 409 pounds feet of torque engine power plant. I might have gotten those numbers flipped, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Really, the horsepower and the torque, it doesn't matter because I have no satisfaction in flooring this and driving it like an idiot. In fact, because of that, I, I don't need this 48 volt supercharging system. The regular twin turbo V6 was totally adequate. In fact, there's not a huge difference in my opinion between uh, this e-supercharger and the regular twin turbo V6. But the reason why you have to go with this is to get the extra features, which I will talk about in the interior segment. But is it a quick car? I mean, yeah, technically on paper, yes. I think it does zero to 60 in like five seconds flat or maybe even a little bit quicker than that. And it's made to a eight speed automatic transmission. And you might be asking yourself, you know, where's the cons, Kevin? Where's the uh, the issues with this car? There really isn't a con driving this car. From the driving standpoint, there are no cons. And that shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone because um, this is, once again, this is a six figure automobile. There better not be any cons driving this car. This is all expected of a car that costs this much money this shouldn't come as a surprise this should be this good without a doubt if you want me to nitpick it and critique this car in a way that it probably shouldn't be critiqued then sure i would say that this engine and this transmission is not as responsive as it as some of the competitors like the bmws that use like a zf8 speed or like the porsche pdks this feels a little bit more lethargic but again all of that is a moot point because even in its delayed response i can tell that all of that is by design they didn't want this car to feel overly reactive they wanted this car to feel a tad bit dull what ends up happening is this drivetrain is now ultra smooth there's no shock in the car it just uh it shifts down because you wanted it to it takes a moment and then it gets up and goes now i will give it some credit when you put it in the sport mode and when you get on the paddle shifters 
actually does a pretty decent job in reacting. But once again, totally missing the point. Leaving this car in comfort mode, that's really the best way to enjoy this car. See, you don't have to floor this car. You can just tap that throttle pedal quarter of the way and it does an amazing job of just getting up to the speed limit effortlessly. We have here a twin turbocharged V6. Many people are probably missing the V8. Honestly, I don't miss the V8. I don't really care because this is pretty smooth. I just don't like listening to the V6 at redline. Like it doesn't sound that great. But fortunately, I'm not really flooring this car to redline often anyway. That's fine. I don't really care. It's smooth and there's no vibrations. That's what's important. And obviously it's plenty quick for everyday driving. Other things, I mean, I drove this car in super heavy congested traffic and there's just no stress. There's no drama. I don't care about the idiots cutting me off without using their turn signal. I'm just not bothered by it. I'm just so chill and relaxed in this car that nothing really gets to me. That rear wheel steer, it's no joke. I usually like to back in these large vehicles into parking spots like trucks and these large sedans and SUVs. You find that to be easier to do because I can just use the mirrors on the side. But with this car, I can park it traditionally like how most people do it from the front. And because of that rear wheel steer, it just makes parking and handling, maneuvering this large behemoth quite easy. And we have this other feature that obviously other Genesis cars have, uh, even other Hyundai products have this, where you can whip out your key fob and if you're in a tight parking space, you can just remote start the car from the outside and then you can move the vehicle forward or back. It's a nice convenient touch. I believe the BMW 7 Series back in like 2016 introduced that first, but regardless, we have that here with this G90. It's a great feature to have. I just took a U-turn there and that's a good time to talk about the rear wheel steering. This car comes equipped with rear wheel steering, so the rear wheels can turn up to four degrees in the opposite direction. The base model G90 does not seem to come with that because on the spec sheet, it says that the base model G90 has a turning radius of 40 feet, 40.1 feet, and this car, this fully loaded model with the rear wheel steer has a turning radius of 37.1 feet. And it is, a, it's like a compact car in the way that you can whip it. It is such a blessing to have that rear wheel steering system. In fact, it should come with that on all flagship luxury cars, all these long sedans, SUVs, and like pickup trucks. They should all come with rear wheel steer. Other things to note about this rear wheel steering, it actually provides some stability when you're taking long sweeping corners or when you're out on the highway. When you're driving at speed, the rear wheels, they will actually turn with the front wheels. And again, that just gives you that extra confidence to take these long sweeping corners at higher speeds. And stability is obviously gonna be great with the car with such a long wheelbase and such heavy weight out on the highway. <laughs> Yeah, this thing is rock solid like a brick. It's a tank out of the highway, but it doesn't feel like a tank to drive. It feels like you're whipping a feather around, so that's awesome. But anyway, back to the engine and the transmission. Yes, the more dull and lethargic feel and the delayed feel that this gives you, it's all by design. In fact, you can take this a step further and you can put this car into something known as chauffeur mode. I kid you not, that's the first time I've ever seen that in an automobile. And I suppose the point of it is to dull the responses even further. And I'll be honest, I didn't really notice a huge difference driving in the chauffeur mode. I didn't notice the car getting any more comfortable or anything like that. But there's something else interesting to note, and that's with the brakes of this car. The brakes are good, stopping power is fantastic, but you have three different modes for the brake pedal. I kid you not, there is a comfort mode, there is a sport mode for the brakes, and then you can put the brakes into the chauffeur mode. When I put the brakes in the chauffeur and I really get on it, I notice that the stopping power is not reduced. It really controls the weight transfer. It's very impressive. Your occupants in the vehicle, they don't get you know moved around or shoved around all over the place. Everybody remains neutral, and that's one of the best parts. This is a sedan after all. The center of gravity is much lower than a SUV, this actually handles decently, and by handling I mean taking your everyday left hand, right hand turns, 
Uh, the car remains absolutely rigid, planted. Nobody's moving about in this car. But once you drive it like an idiot, drive it really hard, once again, you're missing the point because there is no satisfaction in pushing this car's handling limits. I tried doing it and honestly, it was such a waste. It's like I already mentioned, the previous generation G90 probably handles better than this. They've really softened everything up to give you this ultra plush demeanor and quality and I appreciate it for that. Other things I forgot to note, uh, this car does have multi-link suspension both in the front and the rear. That is the uh, suspension architecture that we use which is literally the best suspension architecture. And the multi-chamber air suspension, it's also intelligent. It'll obviously auto level for you so depending on you know, who's sitting in the car and where they're sitting in the vehicle, it will manage the height and everything of the car and it will calculate the weight that the vehicle is carrying in the trunk and it'll compensate for that as well. And you can raise the suspension here with the press of a button if you're going over some gravel and you wanna protect the undercarriage, but the car can also auto detect what the car needs to do with the suspension because the base level G90 does not come with air suspension, but it does come with adaptive variable suspension. And all models of the G90 will come with a camera monitoring system, so it'll read the road ahead of itself to help the suspension prepare itself for whatever bump is coming up, which is a technology that they featured in Rolls Royces like in 2014. But regardless, we're seeing that here in the more normal flagship cars, right? As long as you're okay with this car not being a razor sharp driving experience, as long as you recognize that this is a six figure luxury barge, then you will be absolutely in love with this car. If you've been looking for something to lower your blood pressure, to take the uh, pain away, literally, because we do have massaging seats and all four seats in this car, and they do work extremely well. It'll actually get in on your pressure points a little bit. It's great, it's fantastic. You have your own mood curators here. You can put it into vitality mode or comfort mode, and it'll play this nice soothing melody and tones. Genesis used to be mocked as the copycat, now they are like super original now. <laughs> now there's nothing else quite like it. So if you appreciate that, then go ahead because you will absolutely have people coming up to you asking you about this car. I can I can totally see that. There's nothing else out there that looks like this car. So with that established, let's go ahead and let's transfer over to the interior segment because yeah, the driving is great, but there are certainly some questionable attributes in the interior. So let's talk about that and let's get into it. There is a lot to talk about with the interior of this 2023 Genesis G90. The first thing is you can just have the key in your pocket and the vehicle will automatically unlock itself as soon as you walk up to it. As you already saw, the door handles just pop out, right? Otherwise, they are receded into the vehicle when the vehicle is locked. So let's grab the handle. This is a electric motorized door, all four of them, mind you. What ends up happening is you sit inside the vehicle and then all you have to do to close the door, because obviously this is far too beneath me to reach over and grab that door, right? So they took a page out of Rolls Royce's book and you now have a button to press in the center console to close the door. <laughs> Nice, right? And again, electric door. So all you have to do to open the door is press this button. You cannot open the door by pressing this button because it's a safety hazard, right? You don't, you don't just want to electronically open your door and have some you know, cyclists come and <laughs> demolish it, right? So anyway, you press it and just by pressing the button, it'll automatically kind of open itself like this and then you can just gently push it away to open it further. This is one of my most favorite designs of this new G90. This is the most practical feature. I love this so much. And when you get out of the vehicle, all you have to do is press this button and it will automatically close itself. Honestly, my most favorite part about owning this car for one week, well not owning and testing it for you for a week. So that is genuinely brilliant. But you can tell these are extremely heavy doors but because they're electric motorized, makes it much easier to live with on an everyday basis. And again, the, well, let me go to the other side because that's where the, the boss sits, right? So you kind of uh, open this door 
for your client right in the back they get in and also you can press this button as well to close the door if you want to but the passengers the rear passengers also have their own button here as well to press and close the door it is very baller in here one of the best features ever one of my most favorite attributes about this car okay enough of the door let's close that like so sometimes you have to hold on to it a little bit and let's talk about really all the features and gadgets that we have up here then we'll move into the rear and then we'll talk about the trunk we have the door open here this design of the door is truly elegant it's simple and has some very unique design touches so let's talk about it first we have this almost like this forged carbon design going across this door panel and throughout this interior i really appreciate that design and we have these kind of lines going through here we have the 23 speaker banging all this in sound system because this is the fully loaded 48 volt e supercharged model for a hundred thousand dollars talk more about that sound system a little bit later we have three-way memory seats you have your quick access to the massage function and you have a pass button here stitch work going all throughout the interior of this cabin and of course this door as well this entire door is just padded in leather trimming all throughout soft touch materials all throughout the construction of this door nothing is creaking and rattling in this vehicle of course and again the bang and in the larger speaker grill right here as well and let me actually uh, just close this door and as we see here there's actually another button right here that you can press and that lets you access your little cubby space that you have inside of the door close that and here is uh, i guess if this electronic feature does not work you can just open the door this way but you have to press it twice or three times in this case i had to register but yeah if you press that pretty much two times that's how you can physically open this door if this button doesn't seem to work let's go ahead and start this vehicle up push button start obviously we have here this white interior as you can see and we have some brown to break it up as well all throughout this upper portion of the of the dash and the steering wheel definitely a well-designed cabin space it is definitely something to behold this white interior because this car has absolutely no tint on it it's an absolute fishbowl so these white seats do look pretty epic when people look at it from the outside let's talk about this steering wheel here we have this two-spoke design which we saw in the g80 and the gv80 and honestly i really like it i think it's a very elegant and simplistic design for the steering wheel and we do have some you know kind of electronic buttons but they're actually physical buttons that you can actually push into it's not a touch haptic button if you will but once the vehicle is off these these illuminated buttons they will turn off as well and these are dummy switches which is kind of a weird design but anyway uh that doesn't really bother me but this is totally different from the g80 and the gv80 steering wheel because as you can see there's like this 3d element to it as you can see and there's like this empty space in the middle so very unique and interesting design i absolutely loved interacting with the steering wheel in my one week of testing this car that has not been an issue and you do have some paddle shifters as well all the buttons and switches they do feel great to interact with you have one touch automatic windows for all four windows and these are of course double pane glass in the front and the rear you have your automatic headlights automatic windshield wipers you have some buttons here as well on the driver le left side of the driver for your auto stop start defeat your air suspension if you want to raise that your trash control off button and your electronic parking brake this is your fuse right here you can also access your sunshade with this button very cool child lock safety and this is how you access your mirror controls i do wish that the mirrors were a little bit larger but it's okay not a big deal for the most part they do a pretty excellent job it's a very easy car to drive and all that good stuff 
right here we have two buttons okay as you can see right here next to the gauge cluster this is your trunk release button so you can hold it press and hold that and this is for your gauge cluster to lower or increase the illumination the uh, the brightness of it the gauge cluster you also have these tweeters that rise up when you turn the car on and they will go down when you turn off the vehicle you also have your your HUD your heads up display which shows your miles per hour now let's go ahead and let's talk about this gauge cluster screen here so you can customize this for the most part pretty much all the gauge cluster buttons are located on the left side of the steering wheel on the right side that's where you have your uh, your volume control and this is this is also going to access your your gauge cluster but I'll talk about that later but you have your uh, your Bluetooth voice command buttons all that good stuff here this can be a favorites button you can kind of press that and you can turn that into whatever button you want this is how far away you want to be from the vehicle in front of you this is how you access your lane keep so this car will absolutely almost drive itself I did use that feature and it does a pretty excellent job of keeping you in the lane driving for you on the highway but you should absolutely have your hands on the wheel technically to use that feature anyway back to the back to the gauge cluster kind of press this button and then you can uh, play with the different screens here and if you press your drive mode button you can change the screen further so when you put the vehicle into sport immediately the bolsters on the seat got tighter and also we have a different unique animation for the for the needles on the gauge cluster again all this is digital obviously press it again go into eco and then the uh, the bolsters actually softened up for me and then you can put it into the standard comfort mode and also if you press and hold the drive mode button it'll go into a smart mode or it can go into a chauffeur mode which I can show you here on the infotainment screen so let's go to the home page this is a touch screen and, and it can be used with this rotary dial knob so whatever you want to use go to drive mode and then you can choose chauffeur mode so when you press and hold the drive mode button it can either go into chauffeur mode or it can go into smart mode so chauffeur mode it's supposed to like soften up all the inputs but i haven't noticed a huge difference with the chauffeur mode i do like the uh, the smart mode that way the vehicle can detect for you which mode is the best depending on your driving style so i do like hyundai kia genesis and their smart modes the brakes are interesting you have three different modes for the brakes comfort sport and chauffeur i did try the brakes in the chauffeur mode and it does make a difference the brake pedal feel definitely does feel a little bit softer if you will and they designed it that way so when you have people in the passenger seat or in the rear seats they won't really notice the shock of the brakes as much when you're hard on them but it doesn't really sacrifice your braking performance at all so i actually really like the chauffeur mode that was cool with me that is very interesting that is well done with the brakes i don't think too many cars have a separate feature or a separate menu for the uh or modes for the for the brakes that's interesting and there's all kinds of goodies here which i'll talk about the infotainment later uh, back to the gauge cluster here shows you your mpgs which i've been beating the mpgs rated for this car by one so this is rated to get 17 city 24 on the highway i've been getting 18 city and 25 on the highway so that's very impressive and we have 1992 miles on this particular test model here you have your fuel gauge right there and your temps right there this is one of my gripes i have with this vehicle it's this d-pad right here so you press that button it is a physical button mind you but here let me let me change the mode yeah there we go okay so you have to be in the right mode to access this d-pad with the gauge cluster so you can kind of press this button then you have to swipe to access the various menus and uh you know it's okay it requires some getting used to i'm not gonna lie and also you have to use this d-pad swiping thing to change your change your tracks your, your music tracks that is not my favorite i don't really appreciate this they gave you all these good physical buttons here but this is a bit annoying 
not the biggest deal in the world. You can get used to it, but I just want to bring that to your attention. All right, that's enough for the gauge cluster. Shows you some excellent information. Looks good, looks crisp. I appreciate it. Let's move on into the infotainment screen because that is the main highlight, of course. Both of these screens, they are 12.3 inch screens. You have some physical buttons here as well to press to access your immediate, uh, you know, your most commonly used functions in the infotainment like media, right? You can just press that and it will go to the media screen, which I really appreciate. But let's go back to home because there's a lot to talk about, like the mode curator. You press that, you have a couple of different options to choose from, like vitality, delight, care, comfort. What this is doing is it takes advantage of a couple of different features within this vehicle to <laughs> to make you feel comfortable or for you to feel vitality while driving the vehicle. Okay, so if you click start, immediately all of the sunshades come on in the back. The massaging seats begin to work and it starts to play some music and it changes the, uh, I think at night it'll change the ambient lighting and it changes the screen right here to make you feel more comfortable when you ride in the car and it'll play this nice little music for you, which I don't think is copyrighted. <laughs> it's, it's weird but you know it's there for you if you want there you go it's got some unique little features like that overall the screen is very quick to respond and to react to your inputs that's not really an issue when you go up to setup you have a lot of features to choose from here here and then when you go into vehicle that's when you can select your various driver assistance modes and your drive modes the active sound design which is the fake engine sound you can just turn that off because uh, it's not really that great your heads up display your cluster your climate control how it recirculates the air your fragrance controls all that good stuff your massaging seats which are honestly very good in this car and i'll talk about the seats separately you can access your various light controls your door settings your digital key which is in the glove box if you want to use that your convenience settings as well navigation the sound settings so let me talk about this bang and allison sound system because this is that fully loaded 48 volt e supercharge model we do have here the bang and allison sound system with the tweeters and all that good stuff it's a 23 speaker setup it's the 3d surround sound system with the regular G90, the base G90, you will get a 15 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system, which is not the 3D setup. Honestly, this uh, this Bang & Olufsen system, it does sound good. It is a premium sound system, right? Like it's far superior to some regular Harman Kardon setup found in like a BMW or like the Bang & Olufsen's found in the regular Audis, the non-flagship Audis. This is far superior to that. But you do have to tweak and tune it to your liking because I was looking for the equalizer, but they don't have a traditional equalizer. You have to go to this B.O. Sonic, and that's where you can access your... your bass, your treble, your mids, all that good stuff. So once you tune it more towards the energetic side slash bright side of things, that's when you increase the treble and the bass and it sounds much better than when it's just in the middle there. I do like the sound system. It sounds very similar to the Burmester Burmeister sound system found in the W222 S-Class. I have not tried the 4D sound system found in the new S-Class. This is similar to what the previous generation S-Class sound system sounded like. This is maybe a notch below that, but this is still a top tier sound system. I would put this in line with like the Mark Levinson's found in the Lexus audio system, which is truly excellent. But this obviously has its own different sound signature. It's a little bit brighter sounding to my ear, but it's very good. And that's one of the main upgrades you get with this E supercharged model versus the regular base model G90 with the 15 speaker. So you do get this upgraded audio system. Once again, another reason to upgrade to this model, right? to get this better sounding audio system. All right, so you just have a ton of features to play with here. We'll be here all day if I went through every little nook and cranny of this 
of the system. So let's just go into the main highlights here, like the seat. I wanna talk about the seats here. That's very important. We have this Napa leather seating here, which looks very lovely. It's very good. It's quilted, it's stitched. It has like this black piping going all throughout. Very comfortable seats. One of the most comfortable seats that you're gonna be in. And like I mentioned, the massage seats are genuinely fantastic and all four seats come with it for this fully loaded model and it's worth it it really kind of gets in on your pressure points in a gentle way but it does relieve you of some of your back pain i have to admit it is very good and you can spend a lot of time in these seats as well it's very great for a long trip i mean that's what this thing is made for after all i wanted to share one other cool feature with the seats Genesis has installed speakers even inside of the seats themselves. In the driver's seat, we have speakers in the headrest. And what that does is something very unique and I have not yet seen this in another luxury car. When you have the navigation running, such as Google Maps through Apple CarPlay, for instance, the navigation instructions are only spoken to the driver. Those turning instructions, it will not disrupt the media or you know, music, podcast, whatever the other people are listening to, it will not disrupt that for the other occupants. So the music, the podcast, that will keep playing and only the driver is notified of the navigation instructions. I thought that was very cool. I have not yet seen that, perhaps like the new S class or whatever might have that, but I haven't seen it yet. But I really appreciate Genesis for being smart and implementing that feature for the navigation instructions. I thought that was smart. And since I still have you here, since I'm taking the time to do this voiceover, I might as well talk about some of the safety features. All of the safety features are standard with the G90. Your blind spot monitoring, your rear cross traffic alert, your pedestrian, detection, your front collision assistance, all that good stuff that's standard. In fact, I even use some of the autonomous driving features that this car has out on the highway and it actually does a great job keeping itself in its lane and, and detecting the vehicle in front. But I'm not surprised. I've tested these features out in the 2018 Kia Stinger and all the safety features always work flawlessly in these Hyundai Kia Genesis products. They do a great job with that. And speaking of safety, almost every Hyundai Kia Genesis is a IIHS top safety pick, meaning they do great in a crash test. The G90 itself has not been tested, but we can tell by the past performance of things like the GV80, the G80, they are all IIHS top safety picks. So we can assume the flagship car that weighs the most, that's the largest car in the Genesis lineup is obviously going to be a super safe car. Okay, now I want to talk about some other cons I found with this particular interior space. And it's going to be with this area right here, this material and also this HVAC control screen here. Both of these things highly reflective. When you are driving in harsh sunlight, this silver-ish material really reflects a lot of light off of it and it's almost blinding so I wish they would choose a slightly darker color or something maybe this same carbon forged pattern that would have been great to have here that's matte textured and also this screen is highly reflective as well maybe you can tell it's very glossy and you can see my finger right here whereas here, that's not the case with this gauge cluster screen and also this infotainment screen. This is kind of a matte textured, very nice, very clear screen here. Not saying that this isn't clear, but this is matte textured. So it does not have the same issue as this lower screen here. So it does not reflect off any of the sun. Even in harsh lighting, you can see everything. It doesn't bother you, no issues. But here it gets completely washed out in harsh sunlight and I wish they would fix that or give it the same quality screen as what we see up here. That would have been nice. But I guess you could just put the HVAC into auto and set your temperature and it'll take care of everything. That's great and all, but sometimes you might want to fine tweak a few things. Now talking about the specifics of the screen, this is where you can access your fragrance control. So there's really three scents, but I think this vehicle is equipped with two of them. You have these little jars that you can put into the uh, glove box of this car. But anyway, you can choose which fragrance you want to blow through the air vents here. 
uh, from either this small screen right here or you can choose from the infotainment as well. So very interesting. Mercedes has that as well, but it's cool to see that here if you're into that sort of thing. You have your heated seat button here, which they could have just put on the steering wheel, but we'll just gloss over that. And it's very easy to access. You know, it's very ergonomic. I can reach it easily. Uh, same thing with this touchscreen as well. It's easy for me to go through. I can rest my palm here and just kind of, you know, go through it. So that's nice. You have two little cup holders here. They're not massive, but it exists. And one last con with this interior space, and that's going to be with the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto. They are not wireless in this car. You actually have to physically plug in the cable into your phone and into the car for you to access your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Honestly, kind of unacceptable for a car like this. It should come with a wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, especially since we have a wireless charging pad here, which mind you, only sometimes works when I have my case on my iPhone 13. Pro Max. So that seems to be another issue that some Genesis owners are having. It's with the wireless charging pad. With the iPhone 12s and the 13, sometimes it doesn't work properly. So keep that in mind. It works great without the case, mind you, but you know that's not that practical because I was recently testing a Ford Maverick and an Audi Q5. Neither of those vehicles had an issue with the wireless charging pad with my case on it. Let's move on to some of these buttons and switches here. You know, you have your classic Genesis rotary knob. It doesn't spin around and, you know, it doesn't show you a crystal ball when the vehicle is in park like the GV60 does, but nor do I care. This is still a nice, elegant solution. I do like the fact that they gave you this rotary knob to play with along with the touch screen, you know, so that way people have a choice as to how they want to interact with the screen. You have your physical volume and tuning knobs. You press this button, you can access your fingerprint reader as well so you have that this is your drive mode selection which i just leave the vehicle to comfort driving this car aggressively is completely missing the point and not even satisfying like i already mentioned in the driving segment here you have your cooled and heated seats you have your parking cameras here which i'll show you in a little bit you have your parking sensors if you want to defeat that if you are in a drive through or something along those lines again your two buttons to close the doors when they're open but let's go ahead, let's put the vehicle into reverse so I can show you the cameras. We have a 360 camera, of course, and we have the regular camera with guidance lines. And you can change what perspective you wanna look at. You have this 360 monitor, if you will. You have your settings. All right, talking about the center armrest, you just press it with the button here. And it's not that deep or anything, but you have it here, and this is your USB-C ports here to access your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You have your 12 volt here as well. So you certainly have some space, but it's not massive. And right here, we have the glove box, which is pretty much taken up by the books here, which they give you these nice boxes. It's almost like opening up a gift. So it's cool that Genesis does that with the, with the menus and things like that. It makes it feel a little bit more special, right? Regarding the sunroof it's technically a pano roof but like not really because we have this separation in the middle here this divider the rear occupants have their own sunroof that they can play with which i will get to later on but yeah that is a look at the front i mean as you can see it is a pretty glorious place to spend time i like how they married together new age technology with old school buttons and switches and ergonomics it's all easy to access for the most part there's no real learning curve here blind spots are well controlled in here it's just a great place to spend time and very ergonomic so with that let's go ahead and let's get into the rear seats now <music> Let's do this right and let's get behind the passenger rear door. As you can see, effortlessly opens because we have that electronic operated door, right? Makes handling this very heavy door much easier. Now, as we can see, we are greeted by a lot 
of space because after all this is a flagship luxury sedan so it's basically a limo but keep in mind there's actually another model sold in korea which is even longer and bigger than this g90 but we don't get that here in the united states nor is that necessary because this is already huge all right stepping inside and of course once again can't be bothered to close my own door so press this button close it that way and actually i should show you this um if let's say you have like your leg right here and you go to close this door it will stop for you so you just get a gentle nudge i know that you know it still hit my <laughs> knee but it actually slowed down and i didn't really feel any pain from that a lot to talk about just in the back seat alone there's i mean it's a flagship luxury car there's always going to be a lot to talk about with these types of vehicles first of all the seat comfort continues back here and we have the same high quality seats however one important thing to keep in mind is these soft pillows which honestly i thought was just a complete gimmick but until i put my head on one of these things these things really are soft and plush and i do like it quite a lot makes the journey very relaxing and as we see here we have the sun blockers already up all of this is electronic of course you can put them down with these switches here it goes down immediately so you can access them both if you want and that's also how you access the the window switches as well and these are double pane glass mind you in the back and that's one of the reasons why this vehicle is so freaking isolated okay so those are your switches there for your windows and for your sun blockers now we also have memory seats in the back <laughs> on both sides because if you're an executive you want to have your memory seats in the back you also have a rest position as well which i'm not gonna lie is amazing and you have to actually hold the button down so i'll demonstrate for you mind you you don't get any of these features in the base model of the g90 you have to step up to this hundred thousand dollar model and essentially what this rest position has done is it has reclined my my rear seat brought the bottom portion of the seat up a little bit and now it's moving the front seat forward and it's bringing up my recline i'm sorry my my little ottoman here so I'm in full pimp mode back here, full baller mode. And life is good from this seat of the G90. Now, it's only for this seat. The seat behind the driver does not get any of these functions. You don't have the ottoman or whatever the hell down here. But you can play with the, uh, with the recline of the seat. It also has a rest button as well. But it just doesn't have the ottoman and it doesn't obviously move the driver's seat forward like this. So this is really where the executive sits. And yeah, it's nice. This is a fantastic position to be in while traveling. Now, again, you don't need to have that seat forward like that to be comfortable. We can actually press this button right here and everything will revert back to its original setting. And the front seat will also come back as well. So there you have it. As that's doing its thing, we also have a center display as well for the rear occupants to play with. And I will go through all that. Just tap on that right here or swipe it, whatever. And there you are. This is a matte textured screen, similar to the ones you get up here for the gauge cluster and the infotainment. So this same screen quality, that's all I require out of the HVAC screen. All right, let's start out with the home screen here. You have your climate, your seat, your massage, your shades, your lights, your setup. I like how their pictures that they use, it's very similar to like a home, right? Like shades that you would find in a house or lights that you would find inside of a home. So I just thought that was interesting. Makes the cabin feel more homely. And these same basic genres, that's what you get here on the side as well. So you can just access your seats your massage and everything, your shades from the from the side menu structure as well. 
a lot to play with here. Once again, it's the same massage functions as you get in the front. They are very useful. They are very nice on your back. I, I'm not going to deny that. Basically, all these executive features that you get in the rear, you have to step up to this $100,000 model to be able to access these uh, reclining seat functions, all that good stuff. And once again, you can uh, open and close your rear sunroof here. I'm sorry. So there you have it. And also, I forgot to mention this wonderful suede-like material all throughout the, uh, the, the roofing of this car and, and the sides here. This material will help to quiet the vehicle down even further, and it's even found on the uh, these kind of vanity mirrors, which is very cool. A lot of attention and detail here. This car is worth every penny that you pay for it. I mean, you, once again, you have that carbon-like material in the back seats as well. I mean, like, no stone was left unturned in the production of this car. They really paid attention to every little thing. One surprising thing is, you know, yeah, we have this little screen to play with, but I'm surprised that there's not a screen behind the front seats here, like a DVD player, or like in some cases, some vehicles you can plug in like a freaking PlayStation and play that from the, you know, back seat of a car. Like that Ford Expedition that I recently reviewed. You can have like a whole Nintendo Wii set up in the back if you wanted to. Surprises G90 doesn't have something like that. And I think on the new BMW 7 Series, like a huge TV panel just drops from the ceiling. You know, that's probably like the next level that Genesis can go to, but this is good enough for me. I don't really care for the rear seating entertainment, but I just thought I would mention it. This car doesn't have it. The lighting, you can turn them all on back here if you want to. You can change what color they are if you want these lights to look like the uh, interior of a refrigerator you can do that if you want to i like the warm colored lighting and how bright you want those lights to be all from a press of a button back here and you can access your media your radio all that good stuff all from this little setup right here you also have your own wireless charging pad in the back and you also have this little box here where you can put your phone in it and these are uv lights which will shine on your phone or whatever you have in this little cubby space here and it will actually clean or disinfect your phone with these uv lights that you have in this cubby space you also have your usb-c port you also have a pass through here because Really, you can't fold down these seats due to their reclining nature. So at least you do have the center pass through and you can put this whole system up and you can technically have five people right here in the back. But obviously we have the center transmission tunnel. It's really not ideal to have five people, but it's good to have in a pinch, right? And you have your vents back here to play with, your 12 volt, your USB-C. I'll show you right here. These are your memory seats and all that good stuff that you can play with for the person sitting behind the driver's side and also there's some tow room here as well which gives you a few extra inches of leg room so well designed rear cabin space for sure and we also have a little storage space back here to put like a book or a newspaper or a magazine whatever so interesting <laughs> design there as well yeah all well done and very impressive one of the most comfortable experiences i have had in a car honestly being in this seat and in the driver's seat they're both equally epic i appreciate both so with that established let's go ahead and let's check out the trunk space and let's end this review off all right coming to the trunk you can open it up with the key fob or you can just press this button right here and as I already showed you, there's a button in the, uh, you know, next to the gauge cluster on the left side there as well to open up the trunk. And as we see here, this is a good sized trunk, but it's not the biggest I've seen. It's kind of uh, not that tall, but it is rather wide. And obviously you can fit your classic, the, uh, the golf clubs and everything, multiple sets, I'm sure. So yeah, I mean, it's good enough for most folks, but this is what you sacrifice compared to an SUV is this storage space, but this is a far better driving experience and riding experience compared to an SUV, in my opinion. You can pull this up here as well, and 
down here, what you have here, is not a spare tire, but it's the 48 volt battery system. Yeah, that's what you sacrifice when you go with this model. Otherwise, with the base model of the G90, you would have had a spare tire back here. We don't even have run flat tires on this car, which is, you know, obviously makes the car smoother, but I will say the new run flat tires that we get from like Bridgestone or, or even from Pirelli, they're pretty good. So if you wanted to use run flat tires, I'm sure this car will still perform extremely well, but I just wanna show you this trunk space. It is lined in this carpet-like material, and this section right here is protected in this plastic, so it's not gonna crush anything. Should be good enough for most folks. I just have my bag there for reference. So that's gonna be a look at the trunk. You can also close the trunk, or you can lock the vehicle by pressing this button here as well that established let's go ahead and let's talk about the conclusions so after spending one week with this 2023 genesis g90 and after filming this entire review let us conclude well i love it i mean what's really not to love here i mean other than some questionable interior choices like some of the materials i mentioned like this highly reflective silver material in the center console the glossy finish on the hvac controls and the lack of wireless android auto and apple carplay i mean there's really nothing else really practically for me to complain about and besides this car does come with over-the-air updates for the infotainment so who knows maybe down the road genesis could release an update for these infotainments and it could have the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We'll see if that's the case. I hope they come out with it very quickly. And driving wise, there's nothing to complain about, but as a six figure car goes, you better not have anything to complain about with the way this car drives. As long as you are able to understand that this is not a sporting experience by the least bit. The seven series feels dead to me. The Audi A8 was too old. The one that I tested out was like 2017. So that's not a great comparison. This is actually very much in line with the S-Class, the W222. Perhaps the newest S-Class, the W223 is superior. It should be. There's a level of diminishing returns. And besides that car is gonna cost like 25 to 30 grand more than this G90 fully loaded. And not only costs more, I highly doubt it's gonna be like significantly more quieter or more comfortable than this. And they really went off the deep end with their technology in the new S-Class. This G90 really marries together traditional buttons and switches and traditional ergonomics with some of the new school stuff. That's why I like this and that's why this comes so naturally to me. Plus it's the different one, right? It's different, but it's not sacrificing much. This isn't like Maserati charging 150 grand for mediocrity. No, this is actually worth every penny that they are charging. Another huge advantage of Genesis is the fact that they offer the best warranty in the luxury car game, a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty with three years of free maintenance, mind you. They will come pick the car up and drop it right back off. I mean, it's amazing the level of service that they offer. And as I already mentioned, this is a significant improvement over any normal car that you're ever going to get into, like a Sonata or something, right? The way it just hovers over bumps and hovers over the road really it's like as if this car isn't even rolling on tires it's like it's just floating over the uh over the road that is a very cool sensation that this car is pulling off and i hope people who are looking for a premium experience really consider this because i get it this might not still have the brand cachet that you're looking for but i think with its design its exotic looks its hypnotic looking wheels it just stands out from the rest of the vehicles and there's just no compromise with the interior quality, driving quality. I hope you consider it. I guess the next step for stuff like this is just to go full EV. I think I heard somewhere that Genesis is gonna go full EV by 2025. That's pretty ridiculous to me. <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but that is interesting if that's what they're planning on doing because that would be the next level for something like this in terms of smoothness and not even having a transmission at all. So with all that, I hope you consider it. Thanks again for watching. The next video will be on the end screen here and I'll see you there.